I, you know, my family will tell you I, I am a dog person. I, we only have four dogs right now at home. I'm a professor in the School of Medicine and I work in, I have kind of a variety of jobs. Uh, I'm an oncologist who specializes in both breast and GYN or gynecologic cancers. I also run the palliative care program here at Huntsman, but it's called Supportive Oncology and Survivorship. Supportive Oncology, palliative care, really is a type of service where we try to help support patients who are struggling with any kind of serious illness, and in our case, it's cancer here. Generally, we're here to help improve their quality of life because cancer's tough and the treatments are tough, and sometimes you just need to have somebody who's focusing really just on your quality of life. The best part are the relationships that you build. Um, the relationships with your patients, it goes without saying that those can be very rich and rewarding regardless of the outcome. It's the journey that matters. Everybody has that same philosophy of, you know, number one, we're gonna do best for, the best thing that we can for our patients. And number two, we're gonna also enjoy this and make sure that we take the time to appreciate the things that are good and going well. My family will tell you I, I am a dog person. I, we only have four dogs right now. We have a miniature schnauzer named Louie, and we have a, a yellow lab named Paris, and a white boxer named Bucky. Tails, no tails, long hair, short hair, we do it all. <laughs> the next oldest is a freshman in the medical school here at the University of Utah. I, I have to brag on her because my mother also is a doctor, so she will be the third generation female physician in our family, mm -hmm. which I, I don't know any other family that has that, those kind of bragging rights, so I, I unearth them whenever I can. You know, I'm a cancer survivor myself, so I actually have learned a lot from my patients because I had all these wonderful role models as I was going through my cancer journey. Oftentimes when I feel lost or hopeless, I would think back to some of my patients and how they managed to successfully handle this, this crisis. Now that I'm you know, back in the, the practice again, I can also relate to some of the fears and worries that they may have that they're not willing to share.